Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. How would you like to assemble with more reliability than torque and friction? Let's talk about turn of nut. It is an old and tried method that's been used in the structural industry for many, many years. Correct, Chris? Absolutely. And Chris, thank you for being with us. Thank you for hanging in there Absolutely. and doing another episode with me. I'm just glad you hadn't chased me out of Texas just yet. I'm oh. excited to talk to you about turn of nut. Hey, you got your boots on, so we're gonna make a Texan out of you. <laughs> All right, so turn of nut. Turn of nut is first based on the theory of Hooke's Law which tells us that steel will stretch 1,000th for every 30,000 pounds per square inch of stress applied for every inch of material between bearing surfaces. So it's all about stretching that steel. And through doing turn of nut, that angle of rotation, we now can more determine how much that steel is going to stretch. So RCSC has done a good job of giving us real guidelines on how much to rotate the nut in order to accomplish a stretch in the steel. Absolutely, and when we get down to the iron workers, we don't need them or anyone that's installing these bolts to know Hooke's Law or physics or whatever. Right. They know that when they get that third turn, for example, on a bolt that's less than four times the diameter, right. they're gonna go a third turn every time. That's repeatable, and that's the most important thing is to get the performance out of these structures that we need so that we know that we have a secure joint. And it's repeatability. That was a good word for you to use. So if they're doing the same thing over and over and over, they're getting repeatable results. Again, follow the RCSC guidelines in this specification. So with that, let's go back over to our load cell and let's demonstrate what we're talking about. Let's turn some nuts. All right. Okay, we're back at the Skidmore uh, demonstration. So uh, the load cell, again, we have the dial indicator. We have a three quarter inch by two inch uh, A325 bolt that will need to go to 29,000 and explain the, more, the rest of the test what we do. Yes, here. sir. So what we're gonna do here for you guys is we're gonna do a pre-installation verification test. So the RCSC is gonna recommend we get, to get, this, get this bolt to snug tight. Okay. Then we're gonna give it a one third turn because it's less than four times the diameter okay. and the length. And we're gonna see where that registers. If it doesn't get to where we need it to get, then we're gonna keep rotating and then right. we need to mark, this is how far we had to rotate this nut, or not mark, we're gonna observe where the mark is so we know this is far. So for this lot, using this method, appropriate snug, when we get up into the steel, we know what kind of rotation we need to do okay. to repeat so, this method. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat what you said, make sure I have it right. So one third is what the chart says us to use for this size bolt. Yes, sir. Uh, our goal is to get to the 29,000. If it does not get there, we continue to rotate, and then that angle is what we use in our installation for this lot. Absolutely. Okay, yes, very good. Uh, you've already done snug tight on this? We hadn't got snug yet, but we got set up because okay. snug is so critical. We wanted to show it one more time. Snug, right. again, is just until you start to get a reading on the skid more there. They're about 3,000 pounds right there. So now from snug, now's when we're gonna go ahead and do our match marking. Okay, all right, so I have my marking pin here and I will just go ahead and start right here with, uh, with this corner and we'll mark our plate. Again, marking correctly and then we're gonna mark our bolt that is in line with that. And I'm off just a little bit on that. We're gonna do a one third turn, so that would be the second corner off of that. Let me look around here, get that pretty accurate if I can. Okay, so we want to rotate this line, which is lined up at this line, over to this line. Well, we're gonna want to make sure that we mark our nut because our nut's what's actually uh, rotating. Okay, I'm sorry. See, we're gonna talk a little bit more about incorrect marking in just a second, so <laughs> he caught me on that one. All I right. thought sure you did that on purpose. Well, I could have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just pretend I did. Okay. <laughs> All right, get your wrench. So we're gonna get <laughs> our torque wrench. See what we can do. We're gonna set up that rotation. Maybe, no. A little bit more. A 
All right. You are right on your rotation, and you are at about, uh, I want to call it 32,000, 29,000 was our goal. So really, you're really right on target of where you want to be at one third. So that, that hit right where we wanted it to be. Yes, sir. So that's, I'm pretty impressed with RCSC for getting that one third just right. There's a bunch of guys doing a bunch of math in the background, but they certainly did figure it out. They certainly so did. So we know for this one, we'll do two more of this same test. Okay. And if we get these same kind of results on the next two, we know that this lot is good to go. Okay, let's, we'll break that loose. We'll come back and do that other test. Okay, test number two, we have it snug. Let me, uh, let me do my, uh, my marking here. So again, we're gonna mark the nut. This time, Chris, <laughs> we're going to mark the bolt, lines up with that, and we're going to mark the plate, and then we go over two corners and to give us one third turn and mark the plate over there. All right, let's rotate this yes, and see what we go. A little bit more. All right, you're right there at it, and we got pretty much the same results we had the last time. So let's break this loose and do the third one, and that'll test this lot. Yes, sir. All right. All right, our third and final test. Uh, we have this snug. I'm gonna mark it really quick. We'll make sure, again, you stay with us on this. We're gonna mark the corner of the nut. We're gonna mark the bolt in line with that, and we're going to mark the plate. Then we're gonna come over two corners from that for one third turn. You get to see the top of my head and pretend that's a straight line, but that's coming off that corner right there. Okay, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, for that, let's rotate this one, see where we are. Ooh. So I may have gotten it almost. Okay. Once well foop there. All right. Let's give it just a little bit more. Make sure we're following the rules. Yep. Okay, you're right there on it. Uh, it's right at the same load, so very, very consistent method of assembly. Let's disassemble this, and let's talk about two concerns that we have with this. Absolutely. All right, let's take this one apart. Okay, so we did three demonstrations correctly. Now, one thing that I know you've told me, Chris, is snug is important. Oh, snug schmug. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can just slap it on there and give it a roll. Let's see what happens. Just slap it on there. Okay, this really is just hand tight. So let's do our rotation. But first, of course, I have to mark it. All right, so we're going to the same marking again across this corner, across the bolt, on the plate, and then two corners over. You always get to see the top of my head. All right, now, again, it's just hand tight. Just hand tight. You see, we got no reading there on the skid more. But that's probably gonna just be fine, right? Sure, it's gonna be just fine. A little bit more. Oh, now you're right, right there. Okay, where are right. we? Well, a little bit it's more. It's not cheat any, okay. All right, There's you're my over. third turn. I'm, I'm at 29,000, right? Yeah, no, you're at uh, uh, 15,000. So 15,000, half the load, because you didn't get snug. Because we didn't get to three, all of a sudden, I'm 15 short. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's critical. Snug is critical. Let's do one more thing. Let's take a look at the markings. All right, so we saw what happened when you didn't hit snug right. Yeah. So now let's do markings. So we're supposed to mark the nut, which I have that marked. Yeah. So I'm going to mark the bolt. So I got my nut, my bolt marked. So let's rotate. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here and say, well, if I started there, now I get back around to here, so. And you're there. Okay, yeah, there's your I'm, there's your load. I'm at my okay, load. Okay, now, what do I know? Well, did my bolt rotate? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know where I started on my plate. I don't know where I finished on my plate. I have that mark and that mark. Eh, that might be a third. But I don't know. And this is what happens when an inspector comes and looks at this, they're going, I don't know. I don't know if the bolt turned. I don't know what this means anything. You'll have problems. Marking is critical then, isn't it? It absolutely is. You need to make sure that you follow the steps. 
And if you follow the steps, your material is going to perform how you want it to every time. You just have to make sure you follow the steps. Excellent. In conclusion, turn of nut is one of the most widely used methods of structural bolt assembly, and friction is not a factor. One of the big factors you do have to keep in mind, though, is you need to know the angle that RCSC has laid that right out there for you. You got to make sure that you get to snug tight, and you've got to make sure that you're marking correctly so that not just for your edification, but mm -hmm. for the inspector that's coming in behind you, he knows that it was done and he knows that it was done right. Absolutely, and pre-installation verification, PIV testing is reality. It must be utilized. Assemble with confidence, utilizing turn a nut. That's worth knowing. Chris Tribble continues to be a great asset for us. See you next time.